Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network, where we are live from U-Triple-S-A Stadium, where tonight we are in store for a barn burner of a game between the Vieira Hawks and the O'Galley Commodores, both come in at 10-4. and 4. Now to give you the breakdown and bring you all the action, he is none other than Alan slaughter -Zinsky. My man, downtown Caleb Brown there on the introduction, and that's nothing new here. We, uh, I just was a little late getting to the microphone <laughs> here today. <laughs> so welcome to you, Triple SA Space Coast Stadium, where tonight, as Caleb told you, this is uh, – this is going to be an interesting one tonight. Both of these teams right now, uh, you look at O'Galley, who rebounded from that 9-6 loss last week to Melbourne to come away with a win on Friday night, Caleb. And, uh, of course, Vieira, winners of two in a row as well. But both of these teams want to finish strong down the stretch. And it starts right here tonight with only the month of April to go until we get into district play. Uh, this tonight is a huge contest for arguably two of the best teams in the county. I don't think there's any debate who the number one team in the county is. That's the Melbourne Bulldogs. But if you look at two, three, and four, Vieira, Galley, Rockledge, Rockledge, O'Galley, Vieira, however you want to slice that pie up. And that debate between O'Galley and Rockledge is going to be settled Friday night in the game you're going to see right here on Brevard Sports Network. So, Let's tell you what we got going on here tonight as uh, Diamez Ross is set to lead things off for O'Galley. Diamez is only batting 550 this year. As uh, Diamez is, in my opinion, the best pure hitter in Brevard County. I've yet to see um, some of the top pitching in this county get him out. And speaking of pitching tonight for the... Vieira Hawks, it's going to be the junior ace, Lucas Glendenning. Lucas comes in tonight with a 4-0 record, a 0 0.89 ERA. Lucas has only allowed two runs on eight hits in five appearances this year. We'll take you around the Vieira infield and the outfield here in just a second. Glendenning's first offering is straight up the gut for a base hit. And I was just going to say, and I promise, that he is undoubtedly the best first ball hitter I've ever seen at the high school level. Diamez Ross is committed, of course, to Florida State. Stepping in now is going to be Kyle Grusner, the second baseman. Grusner leads O'Galley with 22 RBIs this year. He's the second baseman. Diamez is also quick to go, too. He'll swipe a base in a New York minute, they say. As a matter of fact, in the game against Melbourne last week, you saw it right here. He stole second, stole third, and nearly, nearly stole home. So, Glenn Denning would be wise to keep him close. Alex Sosa does not even take the shot down to second base as Diamez Ross is in with another bag theft. So now the Commodores, who come in batting 359 as a team with 16 home runs and 157 runs scored, have a runner at second here in the top of the first. Glenn Denning, just the ninth hit he's allowed all year long. Glenn Denning looks back, and Ross will go. He'll steal third. Here's the pitch. That'll catch the outside corner for strike one, a ball and a strike now to Grusner. Grusner comes in batting 450 this year. Check that 24 RBIs. He's got two round trippers on the season. 18 hits for head coach Bobby Collins. Glenn Denning rocks and fires, and that's a curveball. And I know that because Caleb has set us up directly behind the screen tonight, and it is a beautiful night for baseball here in Brevard County. You can look across the street and see the fair. One ball and two strikes. Glenn Denning now to... Grusner on deck is Riley, Mr. Three home run in one night, Jackson from Friday night. Here's the pitch, and Grusner stays alive, and thank goodness for that netting, or that would likely decapitated a spectator. Not anything we want to see. Want everybody to leave here with their head this evening. Yeah, right. Glenn Denning, the one-two. 
and caught by Sosa for a strikeout and for Glenn Denning, strikeout one tonight, 39 on the year as Riley Jackson steps in. And if you had to pick a position in Brevard County that this county was just blessed at, it would be the catching position. It feels as though nearly every game I'm saying to you, you're watching two of the best catchers in the county. And once again tonight, you are. Of course, in the game we did last week between Melbourne and O'Galley, it was a catcher, Jake Witherspoon. That was our Connect Sports Consulting player of the game. Glenn Denning starts Jackson off with a high fastball, 1-0 to the FSU commit. Jackson comes in batting 375. He is tied for the team lead with four home runs. He's got 17 RBIs. He hit home runs two, three, and four Friday night in a three-home run performance in the Commodores win. 1-0 to Jackson. Ross at second. That'll be... High for ball two, two and oh. The on deck hitter is first baseman Garrett Smith. The two oh coming to Jackson. Ross no longer being held. He's being checked, but he's not being held. And Glenn Denning falls behind 3 and 0 to Riley over at first base. It's Fano Cruz at second base. It is Kyler Dwiggins at third base. It is Robbie Barons in at shortstop. It is Dion Espinal. We'll explain the pink cleats in a minute. And there's a strike, and Riley Jackson was swinging the whole way there, 3 and 1. He got the pitch, and he was swinging for the Damarni Mariucci Easton sign out there in left center field. Three and one, still very much a hitter's count for Riley. Glenn Denning checks, rocks, fires, outside ball four, and the Commodores have runners at first and second with Garrett Smith coming to the dish. Smith steps in batting 295 this year. He's got three home runs, 17 RBIs, 13 hits. But one thing the Commodores have done and uh, plenty, plenty, have been plentiful with this year, and that's hitting grand slams. But right now it's just first and second with one out. Ross at second, Jackson at first, Smith at the plate. Glenn Denning checks, rocks, fires, strike one. Or no, I'm sorry, missed. One and oh. Okay. The 1-0 is popped straight up, and I mean straight up in the air. Calling forward is Fano Cruz. He says, I got it, clears it out, and the wind at the last minute blows it backwards. Cruz stays with it for the second out in the top of the first inning. Nice play by Cruz, and that'll bring up Brandon Bragg. Bragg, the power hitting third baseman, steps in batting 450 this year. He's got four home runs, and he is second on the Commodores with 22 RBIs this year. First and second now with two outs. Glenn Denning one batter away from getting out of early trouble here. And there's a chop or two or in, but uh, Espinal will grab it. It got between second and third or short and third. Check that, short and third. And Espinal grabs it, but he saves a run. Joe Elvis Tejada, the shortstop, had a great game against Melbourne a couple of nights ago. He comes in batting 389. He's got 10 RBIs this year. Your umpire behind the plate tonight, I believe, is Roy Holbeck. Huh? Yeah. Glenn Denning now with bases loaded. And this is skied in the air. Fano Cruz has got room, got room, got room, and it hits that fence area, and he would have made that catch. That netting, show that netting, how that netting comes out. That ball was coming straight down, and Cruz, if he made that catch over at first earlier, he most certainly would have made that one. So the netting takes away a short third out, and 
living to swing another day is Joe Elvis Tejada. So we'll see if Tejada and the Commodores can take advantage of that situation. Strike one, nothing in one. Here's the pitch. <clears throat> one and one. I would have to think that was low or outside. Wasn't as close as it appeared. We are set up directly behind the plate. But you do like where he's I, – I love Glenn Denning's location to these hitters. You know, to be effective against this lineup, you have got to change speeds and move the ball around. And there's one foul straight back to the screen, and Glenn Denning is ahead of Tejado. One and two. Bases filled with Commodores. It's Bragg at first, Jackson at second, Diamas Ross at third. The batter at the plate is Tejada. One ball and two strikes, two outs, top one. No score here. Just underway at beautiful U, Triple S.A. Space Coast Stadium. Glenn Denning, the one-two to Joe Elvis. And there's a shot in the right field. Ross will touch first, rounding third, and being held up is Riley Jackson. A beautiful strike to the home plate by Hernandez prevents another O'Galley run in the Commodores. Go station to station and take an early 1-0 lead as Joelvis Tejada goes the other way. And Josh Dexter steps in. Dexter, a 256 hitter. He's got 10 RBIs this season. Two of them out there for him right now. Two outs in the inning. That ball got out there. It's the advantage of playing on turf. That ball got out there so fast. Jackson had no shot to score. That ball will be right down Vieira Boulevard for strike one. Outside, one and one. So Diamas Ross crosses the plate, and for Ross, that'll be his team leading 31st run scored this year. Glenn Dennings, one and one, swung on and missed by Dexter on deck for the Commodores is Christian Neal. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The pitch, high and outside, ball two. So we'll go to a deuces wild count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, one in. Base is still juiced. Tejada at first, Bragg at second, Jackson at third. And Josh Dexter at the plate. Ryan Houston over at first base. The first base coach and Bobby Collins, 426 career victories over at third. Here's the pitch. The curveball will miss outside, and the count is full at three balls and two strikes. So, mano e mano here. Does Glenn Denning trust the curveball, or does he just try to blow Dexter away with a fastball down the middle? Here's the pitch. He blows him away with a fastball down the middle of the plate for the third and final out, but not before the O'Galley Commodores score one run on three hits, no errors, three left. We head to the bottom of one, one nothing O'Galley.
Little Lover Boy in the background. Everybody's working for the weekend. I hope everybody had a great weekend as we get set to head to the bottom of the first inning here at beautiful USSA Space Coast Stadium. Alan slaughter Caleb Brown along with you this evening on a great night for baseball here in Brevard County. The Commodores lead it one nothing. Jack Malatino, Indian Espinal, and Alex Sosa, one, two, and three for Vieira. Let's take you around the O'Galley infield. Over at first base is going to be Garrett Smith. Your second baseman is Kyle Grusner. Shortstop is Joel Vestejada. Over at third base is Brandon Bragg. From left to right, Christian Neal, Diamez Ross. And over in right field for the Commodores is Josh Dexter. On the bump tonight is Hunter Leach. We'll tell you Leach's stats here in just a second. And his battery mate behind the plate, Riley Jackson. For Hunter Leach this year, he comes in three and one. Hunter's got a 2.45 ERA. Tonight is his seventh appearance of the year. He's pitched 20 innings. He's allowed 19 hits, 10 runs, seven of them earned. He's walked 11, struck out 17. Opponents are batting 247 uh, against Leach and leading off for Coach Brock Doty is going to be Jack Malatino. Malatino steps in. And Malatino batting 368 this year. He's got 14 hits, 12 RBIs. One of those hits a double. Leach is offering low ball one, says home plate umpire. Who did I say it was? Roy Holbeck. Roy Holbeck, commissioner of the football for the MCOA. Looked like Jeff DiPianto was the fielding umpire, but I'm not sure about that. And the count is now one ball and one strike. Edion Espinal on deck with Alex Sosa in the hole. The 1-1 one -one from Leach. And there's a chopper to Grusner up and over to first for the first out here. Nice play by Kyle to stay down on it and get the throw over. Not as easy as it looks. True hops on this turf field. Edion Espinal steps in, and Edion having him another season. Edion comes in with the pink cleats and all. He's not the only one with them tonight. We'll show them to you. I got to find out why. Uh, what's the significance of them? But uh, Edion having a great year. 361, two home runs, two triples, double, eight RBIs, 13 hits for the Hawks. Lefty to the righty. Leach is southpaw, if I didn't mention that. One and O oh to Edion. And Edion fouls that straight back to the screen and a ball and a strike. O'Galley is as good. O'Galley's probably right there with Melbourne as the best hitting team in the county. But I think the thing that concerns O'Galley fans as you get deeper and closer towards postseason plays, the pitching. But generally, a lot of times, staffs, this is the month you see staffs come together and get stronger. So we'll see what happens here in the month of April. There's a lot of baseball left to play here. As a team, I'll tell you the ERA here. The pitch from Leach and Espinal lines that into center field for a one-out base hit. And he is a threat to go as well. So keep your eye on Edion Espinal with Alex Sosa. They have a 3.90 team ERA. And I mean, that's, not, that, that's good. But you compare that to a team like the Vera Hawks. 
who come in with a 1.89 ERA. Now Sosa comes in, the junior catcher, having a terrific year at the dish. He's batting 500. He leads the team in hits. He leads the team in RBIs. Sixteen apiece. He's got four doubles, a triple, and a home run. Lucas Glendinning on deck. The pitch high and inside for ball one. You get a lefty-lefty matchup. They say it tends to favor the pitcher. Leach has the, the rubber toed all the way to the other side. And this one is blasted in the center. But Diamez Ross is right there to catch the ball on a line. And that will be the second out of the inning. Good hit just right at Diamez. That would roll for days had he hit it into the gaps. But Lucas Glendenning steps in. And Lucas... Not only one of the best pitchers in the county this year, but one of the best batters as well. He's batting 410 this year. He's tied with Alex Sosa, 16 hits. He's got 12 RBIs, two doubles, and a triple this year for the junior. Ideon checked on by Leach. One nothing here. O'Galley leads it. Three hits in that first inning led to a Diamaez Ross run. Leach and Edion's off and running. Jackson down the second. Won't get the speedy. Edion Espinal and Espinal steals that base on Hunter Leach. Leach has not got a real quick delivery to the mound. And for Edion Espinal, that is his sixth stolen base in his fifth attempt this year. So he's only been caught once. And now Glenn Denning with two outs in the bottom of the first with an opportunity here. If he can get a base hit to help his cause on the cardboard bump here at U-Triple-S-A Stadium tonight. Inside, ball two to Lucas. The on-deck hitter is Luke Campbell, who the last time we did a Vieira game, Luke had a pretty good night against Merritt Island. He went three for three with a double and a home run in that one. And Edion Espinal is off and running, and that's going to cause him to score. He would not have otherwise. And heavy base running by Edion Espinal, Great call by Brock Doty to, to have Indian Espinal try to steal third. And because of that, he scores, and the Hawks tie it up at 1-1. Boy, that worked out just as they practiced it, didn't it? As Edion Espinal was off and and that and otherwise he's hauled, he's held. There's no way he can score if he's not running on that pitch. And for Espinal, it is his 17th run scored this year, which leads the Hawks. And there's a chopper down to Bragg. Bragg up and over to first for the third and final out, but not before the Hawks tied up. They get one run on two hits, no errors. None left. One left, actually, I should say. And we go to the top of the second. 1-1. One, one. Hey, everybody. It's me, Urban. OMG Hibachi Grill. Oh, my goodness. You need to follow this truck. You need to run, crawl, 
and get an airplane, go by train. It don't matter how you follow us and how you get there. If you got an appetite and you ready to eat, OMG Hibachi Grill can't be beat. Oh my goodness. Follow us, Facebook, Instagram. See you there. Hey, this is Devon Dudley, and you are watching Bavard Sports Network. Oh, my brother, testify. To the top of the second, we go. As Elijah Circus steps in. Oh, check that. Christian Neal. Christian Neal steps in. And Neal is a 367 hitter. That's what I love about this Commodore lineup. You go 8 9 1, and they could all smack the ball. There's no weakness in the lineup. As Lucas Glendenning has helped his calls, and he'll drop a curveball in for strike one. The on-deck hitter is Elijah Circus. Glendenning with the base hit that drove in Idion Espinal. Here's the pitch, and that ball is slapped down the line, but foul. Good to be back in Brevard County. I spent the weekend in Virginia Beach. And uh, let's just say it's good to be home. I don't remember all these cameras and people taking pictures. You? It's like a photography convention in here. Pitch and chopper is foul. And Glenn Denning is ahead of Neil. Nothing and two. 1-1 one, one is our score. Each team plating a run in the inning. Carl Catala, one of the best from the Vieira Voice in the house tonight. Carl's here. Craig Bailey's bound to show up eventually. <laughs> Must be a big game. <laughs> And that ball is shot in the right field for a leadoff base hit by Christian Neal. And that's exactly what we were just talking about. This is a lineup that can do it one through nine, and that'll bring up Elijah Circus. And Circus is batting 312 this year with 22 plate appearances and 16 official at bats. He's got three RBIs and a double. So for the second consecutive inning, the Commodores have the leadoff man aboard. Everything all right? Did you beat him? Whoa. <laughs> that ball was fouled back to the screen, crawled up the screen, and then came over, and it's a souvenir. Not. All right, buddy. Good to see you, Carl. And back in plenty of time is Neil. I just love it when teams keep their stats up to date. So whoever does it for both of these programs, God bless you. The baseball gods at Brevard Sports Network approve. The baseball gods lean, lean a little more. Oh, Galley runs, man. They get 63 stolen bases this year. This young man at first has got six of them. That ball is high. So this team runs. Sosa could have a busy night. You saw the Almas Ross take off on the pitch. One and one 
The on-deck hitter is Diamez Ross. Keep your eye on that first pitch from Glenn Denning, too, to, to Diamez. Showing bunt, and he lays one down, but it's foul. And it's one ball and two strikes. Probably will take the bunt off or not at Merritt Island. We saw not once, not twice, but three times Danny Widener bunt with two strikes. Twice it worked. Would have worked the other time, but the young man popped the ball up. Roy Holbeck grants time. One and two now. Neal with the lead. Circus still shows bunt. Pulls. Oh, he rung up and in a run down. This could be a double play. Great throw from Sosa. Tags up and that is quickly two outs as Circus turned to bunt. Holbeck rung him up with a third strike and Alex Sosa wasted no time. If you're scoring at home, it goes one, two, three, four, and that's it. Or actually one, two, three, six, because the shortstop tagged him out. And just like that, there are two outs in the inning with Diamez Ross, let's see if Lucas Clendenning gives him anything to hit on the first pitch. He does, and Diamez swings through it for strike one. Good pitch selection there to take a little bit off of it. Yeah, Espinal will catch you every time. A lot of people seem to think, and I concur, I'll tell you after this pitch here, that And, and this one is smacked into the gap, and it is going to get over the head of the right fielder. And around second on his way to third is Diamez Ross, and that young man is just a pure hitter. Two for two with a single and a triple, and that will bring up Kyle Grusner. And that's why Grusner's got 22 RBIs is because he is hitting behind Diamez Ross and for Ross, you know, Diamas is going to present you with the opportunity to drive him in because he's going to be out there stealing bags. And Grooster, to his credit, has taken advantage of it. He may even try to steal home. But I think Alex Sosa, Glenn Denny's got a quick delivery to the plate. Ross this year, um, that's his second triple of the season for Diamez Ross, and the second hit of the night. Swung on and miss, and the count is now even at a ball and a strike. Goodness gracious. Florida State's getting the bat there. I'd like to welcome in Mr. Gary Schifrin. Welcome in to the Hall of Famer. Always great, always uh, great to have Mr. Schifrin on the broadcast. One and two with two outs here. Grusner from Glenn Denning with Ross at third. And Grusner lunges at a pitch outside the strike zone. And that will end the inning. And some good defense pulls the Vieira Hawks out of that inning. Leaves the Amis Ross stranded at third. We head to the bottom of the second. 1-1. One, one.
All right, welcome back. Logan Keith steps in for the Vieira Hawks. Keith, a 273 batter. He's got six RBIs on the season, nine hits. He's got a double and two triples. One of my favorite people I've ever met in Brevard County is his brother. No doubt about it. That ball is skied into center field, and Ross has the bead to track the catch. Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin is uh, amazing. Amazing. It's Lucas's birthday. Well, thank you. Happy birthday, Lucas. Aunt Christy Glendening. Well, that gives us something, too. We did not. Nobody told us that. That little tidbit is helpful. Thank you. As the batter is Fano Cruz, who also is sporting the ultra bright cleats this evening. Hunter Leach is ahead of Fano, and the count is even at a ball and a strike. The on deck hitter for Vieira is Kyler Dwiggins. It's a good baseball name. The pitch to Fano, two of them right here. Fano Cruz, great baseball name, and Kyler Dwiggins. Love them. And now batting for the Minnesota Twins. I mean, you could hear that in your mind. You know what I mean? I don't know why I said the Twins, but you get the point. <laughs> right, right, right. Leach is two and one. Hit him. And Leach hits the, lead, uh, the second batter of the inning. Fano Cruz and Cruz will... Take first. The baseman, five. Kyler Twiggins steps in. Twiggins a 289 hitter. Fano Cruz has not stolen a base this year. I'd like to welcome in Coach Adam Franco, watching here on Brevard Sports Network. Hunter Leach swung on and missed. For a strike. Oh, and one. So Leach ahead of Dwiggins. Head for Fano Cruz. His 10th hit of the season. Cruz with a normal lead at first. Leach takes a peek over, steps over, and that's what you call a check back throw. Not his best. Move to first. Just sending, Just sending him a message. That's right, Caleb. It is the bottom of the first, and we're tied at one. Both teams played it a run in the first inning. Hmm? Bottom second. I'm sorry. Both teams scored a run in the first. Leach checks back again, and Fano claps. The on-deck hitter is Robbie Behrens. Leach is 1-1. Inside for ball two. You know, we talk about O'Galley having... Good hitters at the bottom of their lineup. <laughs> Robbie can stroke it. 409 this year. Here's the pitch. And it's three and one. And Leach is in a bit of uh, I wouldn't say trouble, but he's in some discomfort, let's say. Here in the bottom of the second. The lefty has gone three and one to Dwiggins. Fano Cruz. And that ball bumps off the mound and shoots into center field. 
And the Hawks are in business with runners at first and second. And Robbie Barron's coming to the plate. As I said, Barron's batting 409. Barons this season. 22 official at bats. He's got nine hits, six RBIs, three doubles this season. That is tied for second behind Alex Sosa on the Hawks. First and second for Barons. Leach takes a peek in. Jackson gives the signal. Barons comes. To a set. Rocks, kicks, and fires. Barron's good eye inside. Ball one. Thought maybe we'd see a bunt here down the first baseline. Barron's can control the bat, but looks like Coach Brock Doty's going to let him swing away here with three doubles under his belt this season. A double here would definitely score a run, and Barron's steps out, asks for time, granted by Roy Holbeck. Michelle Marie Morris says, go, Robbie. One and O oh to Barron's. Fano Cruz toying with Leach at second, inside for ball two. And Jack Malatino... And the top of the order is on deck, and Ryan Houston will come out and talk to Hunter Leach. And in case you didn't know, Robbie Ryan Houston, former professional baseball player, he was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in the 31st round of the 1999 amateur MLB draft. And from 99 to 2012, Coach Houston played minor league baseball at the triple-A level, the double-A level, several single-A levels, and finished one win over 500 for his career. He was a relief pitcher, and he was 43 and 42 in his career. Ryan Houston out of Escambia High School down in South Florida. Good ball player. Two and O, oh, and I'm sure Coach Houston's just telling Leeds throw strikes here. Here's the pitch. And Barons has worked the count to three and O. Oh. With one out. Twiggins at first, Cruz at second, and that'll be four straight balls, and the bases are juiced with Hawks. As Barons takes first, Twiggins will move to second, Cruz to third, Jack Malatino steps in. Malatino, O oh, for one, as O'Galley immediately has action in their bullpen. as Drew Buxton heads that way. And Malatino, a lefty-lefty matchup here. at five straight balls from Leach. No place to put Malatino. And the guy on deck, pretty dangerous hitter, in Ian Espinal, who is one for one here tonight with a run scored. That'll catch the outside corner, and he breaks the ball streak and throws a strike, one and one. Ideally, what you want here is a ground ball to either Tejada or Grusner to get out of the inning. This is a very good fielding team, although struggled in that Melbourne game last week. And that ball is popped up, and that's going to get back over the netting. But Leach, more importantly, if you're an O'Galley fan, is ahead in the count at a ball and two strikes. Commodores are a 938 
fielding percentage-wise team. It's pretty good. Picking up 94% of the balls. Here's the pitch. And that's a great block by Riley Jackson to keep a run at third. We'd like to thank Michelle Morris for sending 99 stars. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. The 2-2, and there's a grounder, and it's nobody home as it gets past Garrett Smith. Smith, the ball hopped under his glove. Grusner was there to back him up, but nobody was there to cover first because obviously Grusner couldn't get there in time. That's an error, and the Hawks take the lead 2-1. to one. And we were, I jinxed them. That's my fault, Coach. My fault. I was just talking about how good of a fielding team they were. And as Edion Espinal steps in. And this is not the situation you want with bases loaded. The, the infield at first is in. But you're going to need runs to win tonight. So, Mons will get them here. One out, Espinal, nothing and one. High, one and one. So Malatino is at first. Dwiggins at third, and the man in the middle is Robbie Barons at second. The one, one. And that ball is popped up, and that's coming out of play. Heads up as that almost got somebody there. <laughs> one and two now with one out. And this would be huge if Leach can get Edion Espinal here. Leach rocks and fires, and Espinal pops it up, and that's going to get over the net as well. To remind everybody to return foul balls to the dugout between the leagues. Espinal has struck out only six times this year. He's walked eight times. The one two to Edion. I, I I cannot believe that did not hit him. Riley Jackson gets back there and all of a sudden Hunter Leach has lost the strike zone. Two and two. If you're Eddie on here, I don't I mean you can't take one because you got two strikes. Protect the plate, but take your pitch. Popped it straight up. And this Diamez Ross, will there be a tag? I would think. Here comes the throw. Here's the play. Safe at the plate. Great job by Kyler Twiggins. I expect an appeal because I think he left early. I don't know if he was paying attention, but he got there fast. I looked up, and he was two steps in. So we'll see if Fiera. Uh, is, that, is that what he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, and, and that's what Roy Holbeck's telling Bobby. There's only two of us I can't see. So, look, it's part of the game. If you can if you do it, do it. And he, he, he left a little early. Nonetheless, that's two in this inning. Because the guy, the guy in the field's got to watch the, the play, right? No, you can't, you don't have the umpires to watch whether the guy's leaving or not. You don't have them. He did. I, I, I watched him. But, but that's smart baseball. 
three and three to one now. And the batter is Alex Sosa. What did the great Freddie Blassie used to say, right? For those of you that know Freddie, used to watch wrestling back way in the days. When if you can, lose if you must, McMahon, but always cheat. Of course, I'm joking, but. Oh, look, I mean, it's good play. Good play all the way around. Great throw from Diamez Ross. Good tag by Riley, but the better play was made by Kyler Twiggins. Alex Sosa now, pitch, and Sosa launches deep to right field, back and gone! Alex Sosa with a three-run home run has broken this open, 6-1 Vieira. How about it from Alex? For Sosa. It is RBIs number 17, 18, and 19. His second home run of the year. And the Hawks lead it 6-1. And that home run was brought to you by Dingers. And Lucas Glendinning steps in. Lucas with an RBI here tonight. And Lucas hits one into center field. And Diamez Ross is there to haul it in for the third and final out of the inning. But not before. The Vieira Hawks score five runs. On four hits, one air, none left. We head to the top of the third. 6-1, Vieira. Hi, this is Michelle Rycroft with Beach Wave Volleyball Club, and you're watching Brevard Sports Network. Alex Sosa with a three-run home run in the bottom of the second inning caps off a five-run inning for the Vieira Hawks, and they lead it six to one. And the thing that makes that home run even more impressive, aside from the fact he hit it inside the stadium over the wall, that wall is about 10, 12 feet, about 10 feet, I'd say, is the fact that it was a lefty-lefty matchup. Not easy to do. As Lucas Glendening now with a five-run lead will face the heart of the O'Galley order and Riley Jackson, Garrett Smith, and Brandon Bragg. Well, we didn't, I didn't get one home run call last year, and this year I've got six of them already. Glenn Dinning to Jackson. 
outside for a ball, 1-0. and oh. That's a pretty looking curve ball, but it stays up in the zone and it's two and O. Oh. Top of the third. Six one. Caleb will deliver the fourth. And who knows? Maybe even the fifth. We'll see. That is where Lucas wants it. That drops in for strike one, two and one. All kinds of spectators in the crowd tonight. See the pup? Two and one, and he smokes that one by Riley for a strike, two balls and two strikes to Jackson. Riley with three home runs and an O'Galley win on Friday night. The 2-2, two -two. strike three called, one out. Garrett Smith steps in, and Garrett Check swing, fouls it back. Oh, and one outside for a ball, one and one. Oh, I got you. The 3-1, and Smith Cruz with it. Nice job by Fano Cruz to stay down on that one. That was shot down the first baseline. And there's two outs just like that. That's exactly what you want from your starting pitcher when, you're, when your offense gives you five solid runs like that. You want a one, two, three inning, and any time you can get it with the two, three, and four hitters, my goodness gracious, you're rolling. But now remember, this is a team that scored 157 runs this year. They can score some runs. And Lucas Clendenning's a good pitcher, okay? But they faced pitchers like him. You know, they got the Trey Wheeler a little bit the other night, you know. They, you know, they had some, they had some shots. Trey had a nice outing against them, but, I mean, they still – the 0-1, and that ball is rocked into center field, but right at the center fielder. He moves three steps to his right and hauls it in for the third and final out. No runs, no hits, no errors as we head to the bottom of the third. 6-1, Vieira on top.
Ready? We back? All right. Caleb says we're back. So we're back. There's a, I was just saying we got all kinds of spectators tonight. What's that, a pug? I don't know what that is. Bulldog, French Bulldog. There he is. Pretty dog. They are active dogs. That's a French Bulldog. My favorite thing about this stadium used to be Thursday nights when it was uh, they sold a certain beverage for a dollar. <laughs> right. All right, Drew Buxton, the new pitcher for O'Galley. And we'll give you the book on Leach coming up. Luke Campbell steps in. Campbell this year. He's having a great year is Luke. 395. He's got a double. A home run, 12 RBI, 17 hits. And he's first pitch swinging Bragg deep in the hole, or at least deep on the line, I should say. Gets the first out, one pitch, one out. And Buxton. Logan Keith steps in. Drew Buxton this year. This is his seventh appearance. He's two and one with a five, five, four ERA. Twenty-four innings pitched this season. He's given up twenty-eight hits, twenty-four runs, nineteen of them earned. He's out. He's walked six, struck out thirty-six. He's allowed one home run and one hundred and sixteen official at bats against him. Outside for a ball. The line on Leach. Leach goes two innings, gives up six runs, five of them earned. And that'll be a strike. Strikes out one, gives up seven hits. Michelle said thirsty, thirsty. <laughs> one. Oh, I remember the hill. I remember the hill. It was fun. And that ball is fouled straight back to the screen. My grandfather used to take us out here all the time to Manatee's games. Oh, Manatee's. I love it. Where is that where you sat on the hill? He, he would sit in the seat. I'd be like, can I go? He'd yep, you can go. Go over to the hill, rolling down with all the other kids. Yeah, that's how you did it. I miss spring training baseball here in Brevard. Swung on and miss in Buxton. Quickly has two outs in the inning. Coming up next would be Caleb Brown's going to take over. Fano Cruz steps in. Six one Vieira on top. Buxton and Buxton throws heat, and it's nothing and one. The 0-1 to Cruz. He <laughs> pulled the rope on that one. And it's nothing and two. Before I give you the microphone here, I'm going to tell you about a promotion that some people watching may remember. I, I was a kid when they had it outside. Jackson sets up outside and Buxton wastes one. A long time ago out in Cleveland, they had... Uh, like a nickel beer night or something. And it was trash disco night in Cleveland. And that ball is skied into right field. Grusner calls for it, shallow right, and he'll haul it in for the third and final out. No runs, no hits, no errors. As Buxton comes on and does a good job, the Commodore's got to start hitting here. But anyway, to make a long story short, it was like nickel beer night. And... What ending up what ended up happening was it got so out of hand because they were blowing up disco records on the field, literally blowing them up in a promotion by a local DJ. They had to suspend the game because it got that far out of hand. So 
All you got to Google is like nickel night in Cleveland or something. Ten cent beer night. That's what it was. It was ten cent beer night. It was a promotion held by the Cleveland Indians during the game against the Texas Rangers at Cleveland Stadium on June 4th, 1974. The idea behind the promotion was to attract more fans to the game by offering cups of of low alcohol beer for just ten cents, a substantial discount off the regular price of sixty five cents. The Indians and the Rangers had earlier in the season been involved in a fight, heightening the crowds around this firecrackers, streakers, and marijuana further enlivened the event. Uh, yeah, check that out. I now turn it over back in the good old days of baseball as Joel Vestejada steps in. I turn it over to my partner, Caleb Brown. Thanks, Alan. Tejada now comes to the plate for the Commodores here in the top of the fourth inning. Hawks lead 6-1 to one right there on your Ubrazati scoreboard. That was, the, and, then, and then the disco night was uh, a White Sox game, actually. White Sox in Cleveland played <laughs> in that one when they blew the records up on the field. It was the latest heck. Swing and a miss for strike two. Oh, and two. The, quickly the count. Glenn Dinning. Fires that one high. Try to get him. Try to get him to chase that one upstairs. It's one and two. Ooh, tried to fr frame that one. Holbeck says, uh, nope, that, that one missed. Count is two and two. Glendon Ng with the two, two. That one low and outside, and Tejada has battled back to a full count. Three two pitch, and that's a shot hit out into left center, right center. Beautiful job for out number one. That is Jack Malentino. Number sixteen, Josh Dexter. Josh Josh Dexter coming up now for the Commodores. Beautiful. Kicks, fires, and that one will be fouled off. Hitting one of the uh, the overhangs here at UAAA Space Coast Stadium. Gorgeous night for baseball. Swing and a miss, and it's a quickly again 0-2. One out. Glenn Denning has found his rhythm. Try to get him to chase that one outside for ball one. <laughs> and they get Dexter there for strike three, and it's quickly two outs. Now batting for left fielder number three, Christian Neal. Christian Neal for... The Commodore is coming up. And Glenn Dinning's already ready. That 
one in there for strike one. Delivers that one outside for ball one. One and one, two outs, nobody on for Christian Neal. Rocks it. That one fouled back to the screen. <laughs> one and two now the count. Kicks and delivers the one, two. Swing and a miss, four, strike three. One, two, three, inning four. Lucas Glendinning and the Vieira Hawks as we head to the bottom of the third with your score. The Vieira Hawks, six. O'Galley Commodores, one. And here we go, the bottom of the fourth inning, leading off for the Hawks. Number five, Kyler Dwiggins. Buxton coming back out to the mound for his second inning of work. And Dwiggins is going to foul that one up the third baseline. Steps back in the box. Awaits the 0-1 pitch. That one high for ball one. With the 1-1 pitch. In there for strike two. You know, we were taught, was, Alan was talking about, you know, one of his favorite, uh, Things out here. Uh, one of my favorite things about the stadium. If anyone remembers the stadium, uh, they used to have a hill. That is ball two. They used to have a hill out in uh, left field, and they leveled that off before they installed the parking lot. But there was a hill with the old school scoreboard, and of course, as a kid, I you know, it's hard to get a kid to sit still for a ball game, all game. Fires swing and miss four strike three. Up next for the Hawks, number number seven, Robbie. Robbie Barons. And so as a kid, I used to love asking my grandfather if I could go out to left field and, and go by the hill and just roll down the hill. Some of my favorite memories of this ballpark. Watching the Brevard County Manatees play here. A pie for ball one. Swing, and that one will be fouled. One of my other favorite things uh, the Manatees used to do is uh, during the sixth or seventh inning, you, 
they would uh, get all the kids in the audience to go out to left field, and, and they would have us run from the, the left center field all the way out, round all the bases. And so we truly got appreciation of how big a baseball field is. You get ha halfway to second, you're like, wow, why am I tired already? The one-two pitch from Buxton. And... And Holbeck calls that one ball two. There's a swing and a miss, and that's two strikeouts now for Buxton. Jack Malatino coming up for the Hawks now as we head back to the top of the order with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Strike one. One high for ball one. Seen many a great games played on this field. Uh, many games between uh, Rockledge and Merritt Island for district championships back before USSA renovated it. Fire swing and a miss. Check that. He, he got he just got the tip of it. Count as one and two with two outs. Kicks. And it's... You know, if you know the lyrics at home, say it with me. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Deuces are wild. Score six to one on the OMG Hibachi Grill scoreboard. And that one is going to be fouled off. Malentino staying alive. No, folks, don't worry. Your ears aren't going to bleed. I'm not going to sing to you. Two, two, swing and a miss. Three up, three down, three strikeouts for Drew Buxton. We head to the top of the fifth inning with your score. <laughs> Six to one in favor of Vieira. Hi hey everybody, it's me, Urban. OMG Hibachi Grill. Oh my goodness. You need to follow this truck. You need to run, crawl, and get an airplane, go by train. It don't matter how you follow us and how you get there. If you got an appetite and you ready to eat, OMG Hibachi Grill can't be beat. Oh my goodness. Follow us. Facebook, Instagram. See you there.
as we head here to the top of the fifth inning, Lucas Glendinen coming out for his fifth inning of work. Carson, Carson Leach. Leach for the Commodores. First pitch in there for strike one. That one low for ball one. Count is one and one. Glendening tries to get him to chase outside for ball two. The two one. Swing and a miss four. Strike two. Looks. Getting a sign. Comes to the plate. The 2-2. Two -two. And tr trying to get him to. Trying to get him to chase outside a little there. Full count for Leitz. 3-2 pitch, and that one. And Holbeck calls that strike three. Diamez Ross comes in two for two currently with a single and a triple. And you want to really pay attention to this first pitch. And Ross tried to, I, I, like, I like that attempt. Down is 0 and 1. And the delivery. And guess what? He's now 3 for 3. And thought about hitting a second, but we'll jog it on back to first. Kyle Grusner. Now to bat for the Commodores with one out. And Ross on first. Look for Ross to swipe second. You can see right there in your your picture. Keep an eye on that first base. And Glenn Denning says, uh, you get back to where I told you to be. Glenn Denning, first pitch to the plate for strike one. Not, not, not the best move again, just kind of, again, check it on him. But uh, Ross is like, uh, you want to do it again? That pitch outside for ball one. Back over to first, and I'll tell you what, he, he's getting closer. Grusner awaits the 1 1. Swing, and there goes Ross over to second. And that that one cut off 
from going to that center field wall. And that's a call. So uh, Ross, for the Commodores at the plate now, Riley Jackson, and on, on would they would that possibly be batter's interference? Possibly eating, and Ross will snag second. He says it's okay. I'll do it again. And awaits the 1-0. And he'll hit that one. Great stop there. And unfortunately, the throw is wild. Ross will come home. And the Commodores will put a run on the board. So Riley Jackson will get credit with the base hit. And then Ross will score on the error. Garrett Smith for the Commodores. Scores now six to two. They're on the Connect Sports Consulting scoreboard. And Glenn Dinning checking on Jackson. That was, Yam, that was Ross's 22nd stolen base of the year, has a third of the team's stolen bases. That ball way outside for ball one. So you, you gotta think here, if Garrett Smith can get a hold of this one, you got Brandon Bragg on on deck. Ball two, two outs. Glendening fires that one inside for ball three. Brock Doty inching out of out of the dugout. Almost as, as if he's contemplating here. Got to think here if uh, Garrett Smith gets on that uh, there'll be another con conversation. And that'll be a walk. So Garrett Smith does his job and gets on base. And uh, now we got Brandon Bragg for the Commodores. And coach thought about it. Instead uh, sends his catcher out to go have the word. So with one swing of the bat, and we could be looking at a one-run game, and we, I'll tell you what, Bragg is certainly capable of doing just that. And 
What a shot out there to left field. They're gonna wave him. Jackson to score. And Bragg will be held at second. All right, thanks, Kayla. Appreciate it. As Brock Doty now goes out and has the conversation with Glenn Denning. So two runs in, two outs here. Runners at second and third. As Brandon Bragg gets a single, he'll take second on the throw in. As O'Galley now with an opportunity here. Stationed, really not stationed to station, but as Riley Jackson scores. Now, Joe Elvis Tejada already with a base hit tonight. So, the situation is Brandon Bragg at second, Gary Smith at first, Joe Elvis Tejada at the dish, 6 3 game. And Lucas Clendenning facing. His first real adversity here. He had a little bit of trouble in the first, but got out of it. As Tejada now with first base open will look at the first pitch offering, and that's a chopper to Edion Espinal. Espinal up and over to first, and Fano puts the tag on to be safe about it. As the O'Galley Commodores come through with two you got to get two you got to get the three before you can get the six commodores pick up two runs on three hits no errors two left we head to the bottom of inning number five six three o'galley All right, welcome back here as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning as Edion Espinal will lead things off. Actually, it'll be Alex Sosa. It'll be, well, no, it will be Espinal. It'll be Espinal to lead it off, followed by Sosa, uh, Lucas Clendenning, and then Luke Campbell. As I tell you, for O'Galley tonight, the saving grace for the Commodores has been the job of reliever Drew Buxton tonight. Buxton has come on and mowed Vieira down here in the last two innings. And they've needed to do it to give the uh, Commodores a chance to come back. Buxton to Espinal just off the outside corner for ball one. That misses. That one, all I know, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. The 2 0 to Idion. High and outside, ball three. 3 and 0 to Espinal with the home run man on deck. 
Buxton's 3-0 to Edion. Let's see if he's got a green light here. Uh, wouldn't swing at that. And Edion Espinal is on with a leadoff four-pitch walk, and that'll bring up Alex Sosa. All Alex did his last time up was hit a three-run home run over the right field wall and a more favorable matchup to him now because it's a lefty-righty matchup. Keep your eye on Eddie on over at first. He's got a stolen base in this one already. He's five out of six for the year. Sosa came into this one tonight batting 500. He's two for two, so he's got to be up around 530. And he's got three additional RBIs. Kyle Grusner is in on the infield now. He was playing second base from shallow right field. The outfield is straight away, as is the infield. Buxton. And that ball is launched, but foul. He got it, but he pulled it foul. Alex Sosa is feeling it tonight at the dish. That ball started and then just, there's no wind, so must have been in the swing. Well, that drew a reaction out of everybody, including me. That counts as a long strike now. Buxton peeks over at Espinal and... Sosa swings and fouls that one straight back, and the count is now nothing and two. So after walking Espinal on four straight, Buxton's quickly ahead of Sosa. 0 oh and 2. Now he can throw his pitch, whatever that might be. It is 6 3. Vieira on top here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The on deck hitter is Lucas Glendenning. The 0-2 to Sosa. Jackson sets up outside. Drill up the middle. Alex Sosa having him some kind of night. And Eddie and Espinal will not test the arm of Diamez Ross. And the Hawks in business with runners at first and second. And nobody out for Lucas Glendinning. Glendinning with an opportunity to get the two back that he gave up in the last inning. Glendinning came into this game. Batting 4-10. He does not have a home run this year, but he does have two doubles and a triple. Righty-righty matchup here. And again, everybody sh uh, shaded uh, about midway. Center up. Buxton's first offering is in there for strike one to Lucas. So said first. Espinal at second. Campbell on deck. The matchup is Buxton and Glenn Denning, pitcher to pitcher. And that ball goes in the center, more close to it. Actually, it must have hit Eddie on, and Joel Estejada quickly retrieves it and gets it back in to Drew Buxton. Hunter Leach started, he gave up all six runs. Five of them earned. The big blow, a three-run bomb by Sosa. Oh, and one. Here's the pitch. Nice stop by Riley Jackson. Ball in the plastic dirt. And the count moves to a ball and a strike. There you see the runners on your screen. Camera slightly right for that purpose. Glenn Denning one and one here. Buxton comes to the belt. Kicks and fires. And that is shot in the gap. Joel Vistejada was holding. And Idion Espinal is held at third by Brock Doty. And the Hawks, with nobody out, have bases loaded for Luke Campbell. Campbell already a Connect Sports, Brevard Sports Network player of the game. In the game we did at Merritt Island about two weeks ago, Campbell launched one over the left field wall and 
hit a big double in that one to give Vieira a win. So Buxton in a little bit of trouble here. Actually, he's in a lot of trouble with nobody out and bases filled with Hawks. Glenn Denning won't be at first. He's come off for a pinch runner. And Riley's going to ask for a check in the... Infield umpire says, nope, he held up. So one ball, Espinal at third, Sosa at second. And I think Adriel Torres is the pinch runner at first. And a much-needed strike from Drew. And the count is now 1-1 one one to Luke. Luca Jr. Buxton. Nice looking curveball. Misses outside. Two and one. Came in batting 395. He's got 12 RBIs this year. The on deck hitter is Logan Keith. He is DHing for Zion Hernandez, the right fielder tonight. Buxton from the belt. And he misses outside again. And no place to put Luke Campbell. Buxton's got to come with one here. Three and one. And there's a shot to Bragg. Bragg to Jackson for one. Down the Jackson holds up. Nice play by Brandon Bragg at the plate. Gets the lead runner. Prevents the run from scoring. And the out. So, Logan Keith comes in. Keith also a junior. It's a young team. I mean, you look at, and that one gets past Bragg. One run is in, and they'll hold up. Adriel Torres, Bragg. Could not come up with that one. That was a first pitch bullet in the left field by Logan Keith. And the Hawks are indeed moving station to station. They add one more. It's 7-3. Bases still loaded with one out. Fano Cruz steps in. That curveball will catch the outside corner and Cruz is at 0 oh and 1. A simply gorgeous night for baseball here at USSA Stadium. Hardly a win. The fair's going on across the street. What else could you want? The 0 1 2 Cruz make it 0 2 as he throws the same exact pitch and it falls right back in the same spot and Cruz is quickly in the hole 0 and 2. Keith at first. With an RBI single, bases are loaded. Adriel Torres at third, came back with the same pitch again, and that's fouled back and out of play. The man in the middle at second base is Luke Campbell. The Hawks with one in, one out. Buxton fires outside, four straight breaking pitches to Fennell Cruz. Bragg is about seven steps, six, five, six, seven steps off the line. There is a major hole between second and short, or between third and short as Tejada, Grusner are definitely shaded for Fino Cruz to pull the ball here. And Cruz... Gets it to Grusner. Grusner gets the double play on the soft liner. And nice play by Kyle. And Garrett Keith hauls in the throw. And that quickly ends the inning as Drew Buxton fights his way out of that. Bases loaded, nobody out, and he only gives up one. We head to the top of inning number six, 7-3 Vieira.
All right, welcome back here. All right, I want to tell you a little bit about Brevard Sports Network social media. Uh, on the screen right now is our Twitter address. Uh, we are at Sports Brevard on Twitter. Give us a follow. And uh, lo and behold, we are also the same on Instagram at Sports Brevard. And, of course, if you're watching us, you know where to find us on Facebook. So, again, on Twitter and Instagram, at Sports Brevard. As we head to the top of the sixth inning. As we get a pinch hitter coming in now, it's going to be Alex Jacobs batting the freshman. Comes in batting 143 for Coach Bobby Collins. As Lucas Glendinning to the freshman. Swung on and miss. He wasn't late. He was there with it. Pitch, swung on and missed. And Glenn Denning quickly has the freshman in the hole. Nothing and two. The on-deck hitter is Christian Neal. Lucas. Waste one, high and outside, one and two. I'd like to thank Best Private Investigations. And he fouls that one out of play. So now one ball and two strikes to Jacobs. Seven to three here. O'Galley with two in the top half of the last inning. And he swings and misses. We were mentioning best private investigations you know here's hoping you never absolutely have to use them but you know in today's world you never know uh what can happen and what your needs would be but i'll tell you the best in the business is right here in brevard county there you see all the services that they offer give them a call 321-508-4492 all right like to welcome all of you watching here on brevard sports network as christian neal steps in one out here, top six. It's been Lucas Glendenning the whole way for Vieira. Low and inside, ball one. The Hawks after tonight will then take on Gulliver Prep and Florida Christian. And then uh, they have Bayside, Merritt Island, Harmony, and Vero Beach. Swung on and missed. They got a game to be determined on the 21st. And then Lake Cal, Timber Creek, and they finish up with East River. And the big challenge for Vieira is going to be in that district tournament. That ball is popped into shallow mid-center field. And it's hauled in for the second out of the inning by Jack Malatino. You know, Vieira is gonna have to gonna have to get past Melbourne. And right now the Bulldogs are rolling, rolling, rolling. You'll see the Bulldogs Wednesday night here on Brevard Sports Network as skipper Pete Donovan goes for win number five hundred likely against the satellite scorpions. And then Friday night baseball as Rockledge and O'Galley will do battle. And we'll talk about that here in just a second because the Commodores are five and four in their last nine. And they've got some big games coming up. That one against Rockledge on Friday. They got Palm, or I'm sorry, not Palm Bay. They got, uh, no, that is their next one. After that, it's Central Catholic, MC, it's, uh, yeah, Central Catholic out of Toledo. Chopper, Espinal up over to first. For the third and final out, no runs, no hits, no errors. We head to the bottom of the six, seven to three. And then O'Galley finishes up with MCC and Harmony. That district tournament 
to be a battle between them and Rockledge. I'd like to take this opportunity here on Brevard Sports Network. Uh, we are able to operate off of uh, limited sponsorships. You see our bottom banners at the bottom of the screen. Great partners like uh, Connect Sports Consulting, Uprazadi, uh, as well as Best Private Investigations, Beachway Volleyball Club. But once we get to the end of the school year, we like to try to raise money for new equipment. Uh, we have expanded our operation to be able to hire employees and all of that can done. If you'd like to help us towards our calls on the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, Venmo and uh, Cash App opportunities here between the inning. We do this about once a year, about this time as we get towards the end of the school year. We accept donations, we appreciate it. We understand times are tough. Gas is about $25 a gallon. We travel each and every night to des from destination to destination, so we certainly sympathize with you there. Uh, anything helps. And if you have a team, let's say next year, you want us to come and cover your football team or your youth league or with Little League this summer, you're interested in having Brevard Sports Network come out and cover, well, give me a call at 321-693-7697 or email me at brevardsportsnetwork at gmail.com. We respond quicker to uh, text and emails. And once again, that number, 321-693-7697. And uh, again, anything helps, and we appreciate you and all of your support. The new pitcher for the O'Galley Commodores will be Brandon Bragg. As Kyler Dwiggin steps in. Brandon is making his fourth appearance of the season. He's 1-1 one one with a 7.64 ERA. In three and two-thirds innings pitch this year, he's given up five hits, five runs, four of them earned. He's walked five, struck out three in his limited time on the bump. One ball and one strike to Dwiggins. And that'll be strike two. That one trickles off the glove of Riley Jackson. So one and two. The on-deck hitter is Robbie Behrens. And I think Brandon wanted that. I think Brandon wanted that one. All I know about that one is it missed. I can't tell you where it missed. I just know that it did. And that'll be ball three, three and two. Fouled straight back, and the count remains full with Barons on deck. Seven to three, Vieira on top. Big five run second inning. The Culminated there with the three-run home run by Alex Sosa. As the fair lights start to trickle through the sunset there in the background through the trees, the 3-2, and that ball is fouled out of play. Yeah, you can start to hear them. That's right, screams of ride go goers. And that ball is fouled out of the stadium. And Brandon Bragg is hanging in there. And so is Kyler Dwiggins, who will win the full count battle. That ball is popped up. And Garrett Smith calls off Bragg. 
as Robbie Barron steps in. Robbie said good night. Robbie Barron's seven to three. Vieira on top. Coming up tomorrow night, we have got one whale of a lacrosse game. And that ball up the middle for a one out base hit. Robbie Barron's first pitch swinging and Barron's. Sweet stroke. And Robbie is on first. And back to the top of the lineup with Jack Malatino. Malatino steps in. The other thing we're doing at Brevard Sports Network is we're adding a second studio. Pitch. There's a ground ball between third and short. And that's two base hits back to back. Both first pitch swinging. And the Hawks, who had bases loaded with nobody out and scored just one in the last inning, now have runners at first and second with one out. Back to the top of the lineup with Edion Espinal. Edion Espinal steps in with big Alex Sosa on deck. Alex Sosa with a three-run home run tonight, but Brandon Bragg's got to get past Edion Espinal here. He's given up two consecutive base hits to start the bottom of the sixth. Bragg, that one is hit, and that ball is tailing into the gap, and it will get there, and it is fielded by Diamas Ross around third. And on his way to score two more Hawks runs, and Espinal is thrown out at third. But the Vieira Hawks will score on an Edion Espinal double, and it's 9-3 Vieira as both Barons and Malatino score. Nice piece of hitting by Edion as he went to the gap with that one. That ball just kept tailing away from the left fielder. And Alex Sosa will step in. And it could never, ever hurt to have two additional runs. Alex Sosa, no doubt, heading towards our Connect Sports Consulting Player of the Night Award. Lucas Glenn Denning with a good job tonight as well, but it's got to be Alex Sosa. The junior, two outs now. Coming up tonight after baseball, it's going to be Max Amato from Uberzotti. Max and I sat down about a week ago to talk about all the new stuff going on at Uberzotti. They got a new, uh, they used to have to go over to Satellite to do the 40-yard dash no more. You can now do all of it at Uberzotti. The 1-0 on the outside corner for strike one, one and one. A win by Vieira tonight will move the Hawks to 11 and four. Ball two. The two one. And Sosa one more time down the right field line. One hopper off the wall. He rounds first and he'll stop at second with a stand up double. And Alex Sosa with a single, a double, and a home run tonight.
As Lucas Glendinning steps in. My goodness gracious, Alex Sosa's having a night. That's three different pitchers he's hit off of tonight. Didn't matter whether they were coming from the left side or the right side. Alex Sosa was spraying balls everywhere. Ryan Lewis comes in to run. 9-3 Vieira here. And O'Galley will be down to their final three outs here once this inning's over. Glenn Denning, the pitcher of record at the plate. At the knees, low for a ball. And there's a chopper that gets into left field, past the third baseman. That's Leitz over there playing third for Bragg. That's an error. The second error of the game for the Commodores. And that'll bring up Luke Campbell. Adriel Torres comes in to run for Lucas Glendinning as we head to, well, we, I should say we have two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. One in the first, five in the second, one in the fifth, two here in the sixth. That equals nine. One in the first for O'Galley, two in the fifth. For the Commodores, that's three. Nine three. Bragg, one and oh to Campbell. And that ball is shot into the gap. Make it 10 3. And on his way to third is Adriel Torres, and he'll safely be in there. And Luke Campbell with a base hit the other way. As Logan Keith will step back in, and if Logan can get one out of here, it'll end now. You can center it up. Logan Keith. Brandon Bragg coming on, eating up innings so that O'Galley pitching stays intact for Friday night. And there's a shot and snagged just off the ground by the third baseman lights. And that'll end it, but not before. The Vieira Hawks score three more here on a Edeon Espinal double. Gets two of them. We head to the top of the seventh. 10-3, Vieira.
All right, we got a new pitcher for the Vieira Hawks here in the seventh inning. It's, it's Camden Wicker as Wicker will come on here. Wicker this year, this is his sixth appearance. He's 4-1 and one with a 3.23 ERA in 21 and two-thirds innings pitched this year. Wicker has allowed 10 earned runs. He has walked 14 and struck out 34 of the 92 batters. He's faced 76 of them officially. Opponents are batting just 184 off Camden, who is another junior. And the Hawks are putting it on the Commodores here tonight. I'd like to welcome in Shane Staples, the new Vieira Hawks head football coach. Although, we wouldn't know it on the Brevard Sports Network because we haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, have we, Caleb? No, I, you know, just, just saying. I'd like to welcome in Kelly Doty watching as the Vieira Hawks have been ultra impressive tonight at the dish. You know, much of our preview about this game tonight was about the bats of O'Galley. But Lucas Clendenning has come in tonight. He has quieted those bats, and it's been the bats of Vieira, led by Alex Sosa's 3-4 four, or 4-4 four for four performance, I should say, tonight. And Alex Sosa has been on fire here tonight. And Wicker falls behind the Diamonds Ross 2-0. and oh. Six run, seven run lead for Vieira here. Wicker. Diama is having a night, too. Shane. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, I, I can come to you as Ross fouls that back to the screen. That nearly took out the cell phone down there. I'm quite sure it's not aligned anymore. Ross, it, he has been the one bright spot tonight. For O'Galley, Diama has three hits in this one, including a triple. Wicker rocks, kicks, and fires. Net ball again, fouled back to the screen. And Camden Wicker has evened it up at two balls and two strikes. Vieira will face Gulliver Prep next. Gulliver Prep eight and five. About 20, 21 in 3A, I think. Got to like the Hawks, Hawks chances there. I like Bears playing some good baseball. They, this would be their third win in a row. Again, the, the, the thing for Vieira is going to be, and Ross gets another piece of that as the Florida State commit fouls that back to the string. The thing for Vieira is going to be that district tournament. And, and, and what a showdown. If it sets up that way, and I'm feeling like it is between them and the Bulldogs. Melbourne, the number one team in 6A. Wicker rocks, kicks, and fires. That ball has popped up, and it will not be playable as it goes out of play. Wicker throwing strikes. This is one tough out here. Arguably the toughest in Brevard. Max Preps has dropped Melbourne to third in 6A this week. 12 and 1. Strength of schedule belongs to Pace and Mitchell. Doral Academy's fourth. Tate is fifth. And again, me, I like my two Brevard County teams. Vieira 17th in 6A according to the latest Max Preps baseball rankings. Came out on March 31st, so they'll be out tomorrow. We'll see what the update is then. The pitch from Wicker. And again, Diamez Ross wastes one.
Melbourne's only loss this season has come to Sebastian River. Wicker rocks, kicks, and fires. And he got him. That is, what a job by Camden Wicker there. That just doesn't happen. It does. And that's one out. As Kyle Grusner steps in. Thomas Ross has struck out one other time this year. One other time. And Camden Wicker can chalk up number two. One and one now. Score still says seven to three, buddy. Outside for a ball, two and one. Wicker with the two one. Fouled straight back and out of the stadium. And the count moves to two balls and two strikes. Here in the top of the seventh, one out. Riley Jackson on deck, 10-3, Vieira on top. Wicker rocks and fires outside, ball three, and the count is now full. Riley, three and two. Our next baseball game will be Wednesday. We'll be at Melbourne High School for what could be Coach Pete Donovan's 500th, and then Friday back at O'Galley between, and strikeout number two for Wicker, out number two, and the Commodores are down to their final out, and Riley Jackson as O'Galley and Rockledge will face off, and that will be a battle for district supremacy as well between those two teams. And right now you got to look at the standings, and i got to think the two teams in 6A. Well, you, you know, Rockledge beat Vieira, what, about a, about a week and a half ago? So if you, you're telling truths here, it's Melbourne, Rockledge, Vieira, O'Galley. In that order. Strike one from Wicker. Strike. That's what that last pitch was. That was a ball. <laughs> uh, one and one. Roy Holbeck, you've done a good job tonight back there. And that'll be two and one to Jackson. Wicker has come on and struck out. Diamez Ross and Kyle Grusner trying to finish it up here for Lucas Clendenning outside ball three. Three and one now to the FSU commit. The pitch, and he walked him, two-out walk, and that'll bring up first baseman Garrett Smith. So we want to say congratulations to Alex Sosa. He is the Connect Sports Consulting player of the game tonight. Four for four, four RBIs. <laughs> Heck of a night for him. And Sosa, I jinxed him. Air mails one into center field. He wanted Riley Jackson. He wanted to throw out his fellow catcher. That's what that's all about. I said that. In terms of baseball, this county is just blessed with great catchers. You, know, you got Brady Denenberg at Merritt Island. The pitch. And he's going to college to kick. For, Syrac for Syracuse. Yeah. 
<laughs> the 1 1. Make it strike two. And the Commodores are down to their final strike here. Wicker, one ball, two strike, two outs. The one, two. And that'll do it. Strike three, and the Vieira Hawks win it. 10 3. Your winning picture, Lucas Clendenning. The loser, Hunter Leach. One in the fifth. One in the first, five in the second, one in the uh, fifth, and three in the sixth. Your Connect Sports Consulting Player of the Game, Alex Sosa. The Vera Hawks move to 11 and four. The O'Galley Commodores drop to 10 and five. We'll see you tomorrow night from Holy Trinity High School for lacrosse. So for Caleb Brown, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. Once again. Your final score in the Connect Sports Consulting Dingers Prep Baseball Game of the Week. The Bear Hawks 10, the O'Galley Commodores 3. Have a great sports night, everybody. We'll see you soon.